dogs. The sound you hear are my dogs eating dinner. Does that happen at your house? It doesn't mind. Remember my two dogs. They need to be fed that time. I hope you guys are doing well during our time of sheltering in place and uh, being in quarantine. I thought it would be fun. I'm with you guys until Friday, April 17th, and Mrs. Perez will come back on Monday, April 20th. So until then, I thought it would be fun to continue, for some of you guys, Flora and Ulysses by Kate DeCamelo. Um, I think that I've started this with most of you, but I'm really not sure at this point because we finished up Lulu and the Brontosaurus. And I think I started this with most of the classes, but just in case, I'm gonna start kind of at the beginning and see if we can go through. Um, this is gonna be tricky, but as you know, for those classes that I have started um, the book with, there are actually 68 chapters, but they're incredibly quick. And Kate DeCamelo, in case you guys don't remember, also wrote The Tale of Despero and uh, Because of Wind Dixie, if you guys have read that. So because part of this is a graphic novel, I will hold it up to the camera and you guys, I will zoom in on the page. We have a picture of Mr. Tickham. We'll get to know his name soon in the Tickham kitchen late on a summer afternoon. Mr. Tickham is saying ahem and Mrs. Tickham is reading a book of poetry and drinking what is a cup of tea. Mr. Tickham, happy birthday to you. What's this, Donald? This is your birthday present. It is a Ulysses Super Suction Multi-Terrain 2000 and X. Happy birthday. It's a vacuum cleaner? It's a Ulysses 2000 and X. Yup, it's the crown jewel of vacuums. It features an extra long cord so that absolutely no mess, no dirt is ever out of reach. It's indoor, outdoor. It goes everywhere. It does everything. Mrs. Tickham behind her book like this says, goody. You have to try it out, turn it on. For heaven's sake, Donald, please. And then he turns it on and guess what? His pants get sucked up and Mr. Tickham goes, hey, whoa. He's standing there in his underwear, you guys. And then the vacuum cleaner sucks up Mrs. Tickham's book of poetry as well as the crackers she was eating. You know it's a good book when it starts out like that. She goes, what in the world, Donald? It's multi-terrain, you should try it outside. And the vacuum pulls Mrs. Tickham out. And that's how it all began, with a vacuum cleaner, really. Chapter one, a natural born cynic. Flora Bell Buckman was in her room at her desk. She was very busy. She was doing two things at once. She was ignoring her mother and she was also reading a comic book entitled The Illustrated Adventures of the Amazing Incondesto. Flora, her mother shouted, what are you doing up there? I'm reading, Flora shouted back. Remember the contract, her mother shouted. Do not forget the contract. At the beginning of summer, in a moment of weakness, Flora had made the mistake of signing a contract that said she would work to turn her face away from the idiotic hijinks of comics and toward the bright light of true literature. Those were the exact words of the contract. They were her mother's words. Flora's mother was a writer. She was divorced and she wrote romance novels. Talk about idiotic hijinks. Flora hated romance novels. In fact, she hated romance. I hate romance, said Flora out loud to herself. She liked the way the words sounded. She imagined them floating above her head in a comic strip bubble. It was a comforting thing to have words hanging over her head, especially negative words about romance. Flora's mother had often accused Flora of being a natural born cynic. Flora suspected that this was true. She was a natural born cynic who lived in defiance of contracts. Okay, pots for Mrs. R. Cynic, what does that mean? It means someone who's skeptical, who doesn't trust even facts when they're told to them. So looking outside, Mrs. R could say, hey, the sky is blue, and a cynic would be like, yeah, no, there's a little cloud in there, so that makes it cloudy, it's probably gray, right? That kind of person. Yep, thought Flora, that's me. She bent her head and went back to reading about the amazing Incondesto. She was interrupted a few minutes later by a very loud noise. It sounded as if a jet plane had landed in the Tickham's backyard. What the heck, said Flora. 
She got up from her desk and looked out the window and saw Mrs. Tickham running around the backyard with a shiny oversized vacuum cleaner. It looked like she was vacuuming the yard. That can't be, thought Flora. Who vacuums the yard? Actually, it didn't look like Mrs. Tickham knew what she was doing. It was more like the vacuum cleaner was in charge and the vacuum cleaner seemed to be out of its mind or its engine or something. A few bolts shy of the load, said Flora out loud. And then she saw that Mrs. Tickham and the vacuum cleaner were headed directly for a squirrel. Hey now, said Flora. She banged on the window. Watch out, she shouted. You're going to vacuum up that squirrel. She said the words and then she had a strange moment of seeing them hanging there over her head. You're going to vacuum up that squirrel. There is no predicting what kind of sentences you might say, said Flora. For instance, who would ever think you would say, you're going to vacuum up that squirrel. It didn't make any difference though. What words she said, Flora was too far away, the vacuum cleaner was too loud, and also clearly it was bent on destruction. This Maleficence must be stopped, said Flora in a deep and super heroic voice. This Maleficence must be stopped was what the unassuming janitor Alfred T. Slipper always said before he was transformed into the amazing incandesto and became a towering crime-fighting pillar of light. Unfortunately, Alfred T. Slipper wasn't present. Where was Incandesto when you needed him? Not that Flora had really believed in superheroes, but still. She stood at the window and watched as the squirrel was vacuumed up. Poof, whoop. Holy bagomba, said Flora. Can you believe the squirrel was vacuumed up? Chapter two, the mind of a squirrel. Not much goes on in the mind of a squirrel. Huge portions of what is loosely termed the squirrel brain are given over to one thought, food. The average squirrel cogitation goes something like this. I wonder what there is to eat. This thought is then repeated with small variations. Example given, where's the food? Man, I sure am hungry. Is that a piece of food? And are there more pieces of food? Some six or 7,000 times a day. All of this to say that when the squirrel in the Tickham's backyard got swallowed up by the Lucy's 2000 and X, there wasn't a lot of terribly profound thoughts going through his head. As the vacuum cleaner roared toward him, he did not, for instance, think, here at last is my fate come to meet me. He did not think, oh, please give me one more chance and I will be good. What he thought was, man, I'm sure hungry. And then there was a terrible roar and he was sucked right off his feet. At that point, there were no thoughts in his squirrel head, not even thoughts of food. Chapter three, the death of a squirrel. Seemingly swallowing a squirrel was a bit too much even for the powerful, indomitable, indoor, outdoor Ulysses 2000 and X. Mrs. Tickham's birthday machine let out an uncertain roar and stuttered to a stop. Mrs. Tickham bent over and looked down at the vacuum cleaner. There was a tail sticking out of it. For heaven's sake, said Mrs. Tickham, what's next? She dropped her knees and gave the tail a tentative tug. She stood, she looked around the yard. Help, she said, I think I've killed a squirrel. Chapter four. A surprisingly helpful cynic. Flora ran from her room. She ran down the stairs. As she ran, she thought, for a cynic, I am surprisingly helpful. Her mother called her. She said, where are you going, Flora Bell? Flora didn't answer. She never answered her mother when she called her Flora Bell. Sometimes she didn't answer her mother when she called her Flora either. Flora ran through the tall grass and cleared the fence between her yard and the Tickums in a single bound. Moo, out of the way, said Flora. She gave Mrs. Tickum a shove and grabbed hold of the vacuum cleaner. It was heavy. She picked it up and shook it, nothing happened. She shook harder. The squirrel dropped out of the vacuum cleaner and landed with a plop on the grass. He didn't look that great. He was missing a lot of fur, vacuumed off. Flora assumed his eyelids fluttered. His chest rose and fell and rose again and then it stopped moving altogether. Flora knelt. She put a finger on the squirrel's chest. At the back of each issue of the Illuminated Adventures of the Amazing Incandesto, there was a series of bonus comics. One of Flora's very favorite bonus comics was entitled Terrible Things That Can Happen to You. As a cynic, Flora found it wise to be prepared. Who knew what horrible, unpredictable thing would happen next? Terrible things can happen to you detailed what action to take if you had inadvertently consumed a piece of plastic fruit. This happened more often than you would suppose. Some plastic fruit looks extremely realistic. How to perform the Heimlich maneuver on your elderly Aunt Edith if she choked on a stringy piece of steak at an all-you-can-eat buffet. 
What you do if you were wearing a striped shirt and a swarm of locusts descended? Run, locusts eat stripes. And of course, how to administer everyone's favorite life-saving technique, CPR. Terrible things that can happen to you did not, however, detail exactly how someone was supposed to do CPR on a squirrel. I'll figure it out, said Flora. What will you figure out, said Mrs. Tickham. Flora didn't answer her. Instead, she bent down and put her mouth on the squirrel's mouth. It tasted funny. If she were forced to describe it, she would say that it tasted like squirrel. Fuzzy, damp, slightly nutty. Have you lost your mind? said Mrs. Tickham. Flora ignored her. She breathed into the squirrel's mouth. She pushed down on a small chest. She started to count. Chapter 5, The Squirrel Obliges. Something strange had happened in the squirrel's brain. Things had gone blank, black. And then, into this blank blackness, there came a light so beautiful, so bright, that the squirrel had to turn away. A voice spoke to him. What's that, said the squirrel. The light shone brighter. The voice spoke again. Okay, said the squirrel. You bet. He wasn't sure what exactly he was agreeing to, but it didn't matter. He was just so happy. He was floating in a great lake of light and the voice was singing to him. Oh, it was wonderful. It was the best thing ever. And then there was a loud noise. The squirrel heard another voice. This voice was counting. The light receded. Breathe, the new voice shouted. The squirrel is large. He took a deep shuddering breath and then another and another. The squirrel returned. Chapter 6 in the event of a seizure. Well, he's breathing, said Mrs. Tickham. Yes, said Flora, he is. She felt a swell of pride. The squirrel rolled over onto his stomach. He raised his head. His eyes were glazed. For heaven's sake, said Mrs. Tickham, look at him. She chuckled quietly. She shook her head and then she laughed out loud. She kept laughing. She laughed and laughed and laughed. She laughed so hard that she started to shake. Was she having some sort of fit? Flora tried to remember what terrible things can happen to you advised in the event of a seizure. It has something to do with moving the tongue out of the way or stabilizing with a stick or something. Flora had saved the squirrel's life. She didn't see any reason she couldn't save Mrs. Tickham's life. The sun sank a little lower in the sky. Mrs. Tickham continued to laugh hysterically. And Flora Bell Buckham started looking around the Tickham's backyard for a stick. Chapter 7. The Soul of a Squirrel. The squirrel was a little unsteady on his feet. His brain felt larger, roomier. It was as if several doors in the dark room of his self, doors he hadn't even known existed, had suddenly been flung wide. Everything was shot through with meaning, purpose, light. However, the squirrel was still a squirrel, and he was very hungry. So there's a picture of the squirrel looking at the Ulysses 2000 and X. All of a sudden, on the second page, you will see what the squirrel does. And the words up there say, Who can say what astonishments are hidden inside the most mundane being? You guys look. The squirrel picks up the vacuum cleaner and then all the crackers dump out of it. Mrs. Tickham is astonished. Chapter 8. Helpful Information. Flora and Mrs. Tickham noticed at the same time, the squirrel, said Flora, the vacuum cleaner, said Mrs. Tickham. Together, they stared at the Ulysses 2000 and X and at the squirrel who was holding it over his head with one paw. That can't be, said Mrs. Tickham. The squirrel shook the vacuum cleaner. That can't be, said Mrs. Tickham. You already said that, said Flora. I'm repeating myself, you're repeating yourself. Maybe I have a brain tumor, said Mrs. Tickham. It was certainly possible that Mrs. Tickham had a brain tumor. Flora knew from reading terrible things can happen to you that a surprising number of people were walking around with tumors in their brains and didn't even know it. That's the thing about tragedy. It was just sitting there, keeping you company, waiting, and you had absolutely no idea. This is the kind of helpful information you could get from the comics if you paid attention. The other kind of information that you absorb from the regular reading of comics, most particularly the regular reading of The Illuminated Adventures of the Amazing Incadesto, was that impossible things happened all the time. For instance, heroes, superheroes, were born of ridiculous and unlikely circumstances, spider bites, chemical spills, planetary dislocation, and in the case of Alfred T. Slipper, from accidental submersion in an industrial-sized vat of cleaning solution called Incandesto, the cleaning professional's hardworking friend. I don't think you have a brain tumor, said Flora. There might be another explanation. Uh-huh, said Mrs. Tickham. What's the other explanation? Have you ever heard of incandesto? 
What? said Mrs. Tickham. Who? said Flora. Incondesto is a who. He's a superhero. Right, said Mrs. Tickham. And then your point is? Flora raised her right hand. She pointed with a single finger at the squirrel. Surely you're not implying, said Mrs. Tickham. The squirrel lowered the vacuum cleaner to the ground. He held himself very still. He considered both of them. His whiskers twitched and trembled. There were cracker crumbs on his head. He was a squirrel. Could it, he be a superhero too? Alfred T. Slipper was a janitor. Most of the time, people looked right past him. Sometimes, often in fact, they treated him with disdain. They had no idea of the astonishing acts of heroism, the blinding light contained within his outward humdrum disguise. Only Alfred's parakeet Dolores knew who he was and what he could do. The world will misunderstand him, said Flora. You bet it will, said Mrs. Tickham. Tootie, shouted Mr. Tickham from the back door. Tootie, I'm hungry. Tootie, what a ridiculous name. Flora couldn't resist the urge to say it out loud. Tootie, she said, Tootie, take on. Listen, Tootie, go inside, feed your husband, say nothing to him or to anyone else about any of this. Right, said Tootie, say nothing, feed my husband. Okay, right, she began walking slowly toward the house. Mr. Tickham called out, are you done vacuuming? What about the Ulysses? Are you going to leave it sitting there? Ulysses, whispered Flora. She felt a shiver run from the back of her head to the base of her spine. She might be a natural born cynic but she knew the right word when she heard it. Ulysses, she said. She bent down and held out her hand to the squirrel. Come here, Ulysses, she said. Chapter nine, the whole world on fire. She spoke to him and he understood her. What the girl said was, Ulysses, come here, Ulysses, and without thinking, he moved toward her. It's okay, she said, and he believed her. It was astonishing. Everything was astonishing. The sun setting was illuminating each blade of grass. It was reflecting off the girl's glasses, making a halo of light around the girl's round head, setting the whole world on fire. The squirrel thought, when did things become so beautiful? And if it's been this way all along, how is it that I never noticed before? Listen to me, the girl said. My name is Flora, your name is Ulysses. Okay, thought the squirrel. She put her hand on him, she picked him up, she cradled him in her left arm. He felt nothing but happiness. Why had he always been so terrified of humans? He couldn't imagine, actually, he could imagine. There had been that time with the boy and the BB gun. There had truthfully been a lot of incidents with humans and some involving BB guns, some not. And all of them had been violent, terrifying, and soul destroying. But this was a new life. And he was a changed squirrel. He felt spectacular, strong, smart, capable, and also hungry. He was very, very hungry. I'm gonna stop right there. We're on chapter 10. We only have like 40 plus chapters to go. We can do this, Hot Baker Hawks. So just remember, I'll be posting a video. I'll try to do one every week, maybe even twice a week. So ask your teacher about them and she'll or he will send you the links. And then you know what? Do Mrs. R a favor, put down that Nintendo Switch, Animal Crossing, it's a big hit in my house. I know it's probably in yours. And pick up a book instead. In the meantime, stay safe and I'll see you next time in the next video. Bye, you guys.